Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net, and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at creating some cool classic 3D text. So, here's what we're gonna be creating. Anytime you see the word classic, it's uh, just a marketing gimmick. So let's go and get started. Let's create a new composition and uh, we'll call this uh, E3D. Hit OK. We'll go ahead and create a new solid and this will be our element 3D layer. So we'll hit OK. And first thing we're going to do is create some text. So we'll just come in here. We'll type in classic. I'm using a really cool font called Great Vibes. Now, the one thing we want to make sure is that we want to make sure that the spacing is uh, set up so that it's not overlapping too much. So here we can change the uh, character spacing. So that looks good. We're going to turn that off, select our element 3D layer, and then we'll go ahead and add element 3D. So we'll type in element and we'll drag that out onto our layer. Now to set up our text layer, we'll go to the custom layer selection click on custom text and masks and set the classic text into path layer number one. Then we'll jump into the scene setup. Now to create our 3D text, we'll go ahead, click on the extrude button and that'll create a 3D text from our text layer. We can see we have custom path number one selected. Now if we had other paths, we could select those here. And now we could go ahead and play around with our text. So we'll go ahead, open up our text setting, and now we have the bevel number one, which also acts as a material slot. So I could go in, click on the material, and change some of the settings as well. Now in this case, we want our text to be chrome. So what I'll do is I'll set the diffuse color to black and turn up the reflectivity to 100%. So now we've got a nice chrome looking text. Now we've got this grid we could turn this off by just clicking on the view options and see what it looks like by itself. Now I'm seeing a little bit of overlapping here. So let's go to the bevel settings and here's where we can change the look of our bevel. So I can increase the extrusion, decrease the extrusion, play around with the expand edges and this will actually help us get rid of some of those overlapping polygons. So that looks pretty good for now. We can also see that this is a really round font, but this looks a little bit jagged. So what I'll do is click on our object and let's come down here to the tessellation and we'll set the path resolution to ultra. And that'll give us a lot more segments to work with. We can look at the wireframe and kind of see the difference there. We've got normal, high, ultra, and extreme. All right, so the next thing I want to do is put the text on the back of a 1969 Chevy Corvette, but we don't have the time, so let's just create a plane and just zoom in instead. Uh, so we'll open up the material settings here. We'll click on the material, scroll down. We'll set the diffuse color to, say, red. And uh, we could rotate it. So we can take the rotation tool here, hold down shift and rotate it flat. Then we can take the move tool and just slide it over. Now, I wanna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. So we'll click on the object, set it to uh, 10 by 10. Now, it's not reflecting. So here's what I'll do. Click on our material, turn up the reflectivity to like 10%. We'll turn off draft textures here, so a little better resolution. And what I wanna do is add a reflection to our plane. So with the object selected, we'll come over here to the reflection mode and we can change it from the normal environment mode to a mirror surface. And what this does is creates a mirror reflection so it works really good for a flat object just like this. We can also set this to show some ambient occlusion and uh, get it to look pretty good. Now, the other thing I wanna do is give a little bit of a reflection to our text. So we'll click on the text go to the reflection mode, and instead of using the mirror mode, I'm going to use the spherical mode. 
And so right away we can see now we have a little bit of a reflectivity on the side of our text. Now keep in mind this is not a real ray traced reflection, it's just an approximation, but it works really, really well for this case. Now the other thing I want to do is give it another bevel copy. So if we select our extrusion object, and by the way, it's probably a good idea to name stuff. We can double click, let's call this classic, hit OK. What I'm going to do is add another bevel copy. So I'll set the number to two. And that creates a copy. Then we can click on that second bevel. We can adjust the material. So let's turn the reflectivity up to 100%. Then go back up to the bevel settings and maybe lower the extrusion. So what we're creating is sort of just a sort of double edge and we could lower the bevel size. Now another nice thing to be aware of is that Element 3D includes several bevel presets. So if I just turn off our plane here, what I could do is come over here to the presets, click on bevels, and then click on physical. And we could just double click on a preset and it just changes the entire look of your bevel. Now the other thing you can do is just drag it directly onto an object or drag it directly into the comp. So if you have multiple layers, so if I hold down Alt and drag this and make a copy, I can apply this bevel to that preset and have multiple text layers in my comp with different bevel presets. All right, let's go and undo that. Now one thing to keep in mind is with the spherical reflection mode, it's actually being generated from a single point. So what I can do is I can change the reflect offset and move it around to make sure that that point doesn't overlap with say my background or other objects in my scene. So that's probably a good position for it for this particular case. Now if you want to learn more about the reflection mode, be sure to check out the Element 3D help files. We've got some other videos and information there as well. Let's go and hit OK and uh, then we'll create a camera. 35 millimeter, maybe 28, hit OK. And then we'll come back up here to the camera tool and uh, we'll go ahead and move this around a bit, zoom in. And the next thing we need to do is adjust the render settings. So we'll come down here to the render settings and we'll turn on the ambient occlusion. So we'll turn that on and that gives us a little bit of a shading. We could turn up the intensity here and we can also play around with the radius and the distribution. So this kind of controls the distance Maybe we'll set the quality preset to medium. And uh, that looks pretty nice. And we can also do something like go to the output and look at just the ambient inclusion by itself so we can see what that looks like. I think that looks pretty nice. Maybe turn up the intensity just a touch. Looking good. All right, so let's go and close the ambient inclusion. And the other thing we can play with is the physical environment. Now, the environment affects the reflection and it also affects the image based lighting from the physical shaders. So basically if we brighten up the environment, the entire scene is going to get brighter as well. So we can turn up the gamma to give it a little bit more contrast and you can see that we can just get a little bit more of these richer colors in our reflection. So it looks really, really nice. All right, that's looking really good and next we can just set up the anti-alias quality. We could go down to the output. And a couple of things we could do here, we could just turn on enhanced multi-sampling and that'll actually do a really good job of cleaning up the edges. If you need to turn the quality up even further, you can turn the multi-sampling up to 16 and even use like a 2x super sample. Now some of this will slow things down a bit, but what I like to do is just set the render mode to preview while I work and then when I'm ready to render, just set it back up to full. So looking good, probably don't even need the super sampling in this case. And next, let's turn on the depth of field. So we'll take our camera, hit AA on the keyboard, turn on the depth of field, turn up the uh, aperture, maybe 100, it's probably too much, but we'll set the focus distance about 400. Maybe 150. And now we've got some really nice depth of field as well. Now, if I want to experiment a little bit more, what I could do is use some of the Pro Shaders 2 collection. So if I take my plane, I could go to the UV setting, set it to 10 by 10, then jump over here to the presets 
go down to the materials, Pro Shaders 2, and I could just start putting some of these textures onto my scene. So I could put some cool looking uh, text here. And this is just a good way to try out some different looks. We could even go down to the metal and maybe apply some different shaders to our text layers. See how that looks. So that looks really, really cool. So again, it's just all about playing around with it, experimenting, and uh, you know, there's just a lot of cool different options and things to, uh, to play with. So you can really create uh, some nice results. So definitely have some fun with that. I'll go ahead and undo that. The other thing you can do is change the environment map. So currently we have this cool Lightroom, but what we can do is come down to the environments and check out the basic 2K. So we can click through and see some different environments and change it from an indoor scene to an outdoor scene or a night scene. There's a lot of cool ones built in. Or if you have the backlight collection, there's another 50 plus environments that are very cool and offer some really fun reflections that just change the entire look of your design. I can go ahead and click through a few of them, take a look. Very nice looking results just by changing the environment map. Now, one thing you can do inside of the UI is if we show the environment, we can actually rotate the environment if we hold down shift and drag left and right. And that way you're basically rotating the reflection map. And that'll just give you an idea on some of the different looks that you can achieve. And you can also go in and turn the saturation down if you want to just have a black and white map and keep your primary colors intact from your design. So we definitely recommend the backlight collection because it's just going to open up a lot of possibilities. All right, let me just end with a couple of quick tips. If you want to create this fake paint flake effect, what you can do is use a noise pattern texture. And I'll go ahead and put this in the project file. And when you go inside of Element 3D, now what I've done is I've got this material set up here. I've got the UV set up pretty high, six by six. And then for the material, I'm using that noise pattern in the illumination channel with really high gamma and contrast. And then on the illumination output, I've got the intensity set really high. So if I were to reset the material, I could show you the steps here. So what I would do is pick a base color, maybe blue, then take that texture and load it into the texture slot. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. I'm just gonna drag it in there from my Windows Explorer, drop it into the illumination, go to the illumination, turn the intensity up to 100, and then set the color to like a bright teal color. Then click on the texture and we could just turn this uh, contrast up really high here. And that way we just create this sort of flaky look to our texture and it's still very shiny looking. And by the way, if you hold down shift and drag, you can kind of see that. Now, the other thing I wanna show you is creating the emblem. Now, this is actually really straightforward. So what I've done is I've created a circle mask on a solid, and then I've loaded that up as a custom texture, just as I've done with our text. Now, to create the unicorn, I just have a font called Imaginary Forces, and it just has a bunch of different uh, strange characters. So I've used this uh, unicorn, loaded that up, and then inside of the scene setup, I've just made a bunch of different copies. So this ring is all based on that circle. Let me just show you a quick way to set that up. So I'll double click outside of the group folder, and then I'm gonna create an extrusion. So now I've got my, uh, you know, my unicorn, and uh, I could create another extrusion, and then instead of using custom path one, I'll choose path two. That creates my circle, turn the tessellation up to extreme, and then for the bevel, we'll open that up, click on the bevel, and turn on bevel outline. And then if we turn up the outline width, this is how we can create the ring. And to get a nice edge, so I'll just use a chrome material here, hit N, show the environment. Now to create that nice edge, 
what we'll do is go to the bevel setting, turn the size of the bevel up really large, and then go down to the bevel outline. What you could do is control the inside and the outside. So for the inside, you can make it nice and tight like that. Let's see, it's kind of hard to see. Let me add a little bit of uh, diffusion on the material. A little easier to see. All right, so going back to the bevel outline setting, you have the inside and the outside bevel. So we could turn this up really large. And now we've created like a nice ring on the outside. Then we could create another extrusion, set the path to number two, push that in like that. And then it's just a matter of playing around with the, uh, the different materials. I think this is pretty much the main stuff uh, to, uh, to give you an idea of what to play with. And then, of course, for this uh, round plane, what we could do is go into the reflection mode, set it to mirror. Now, you can see it doesn't line up right. So what we have is the reflection rotation. So what you want to do is rotate that until the arrows are pointed up in the direction you want the reflection to be. So what I'll do is I'll just keep rotating this all the way around until it's flat. So let's do 270, which should be good. And then you just always want to make sure that the reflection offset is aligned perfectly to the flat edge of the surface. So what we could do is Alt-click on this. So we can just look at the edge here. Maybe we'll go to like a side view. So you can see, this is really actually important, so I'm glad we're talking about it is you see the reflection is in the middle instead of the front plane. So what we'll do is we'll come over here to the offset and we'll just shift it forward so that it just covers that edge. And then we'll go back to the perspective and then when we turn everything else back on, turn our reflections preview back on, we can see now that that reflection is picking up correctly, it's aligning perfectly and uh, and obviously it's rendering really, really fast. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea on uh, how to create that and uh, have some fun. All right, so that's how we can create some really cool classic 3D text inside of Element 3D version two. Have fun playing around with these techniques and uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm Andrew Kramer and we will see you next time.